This is Let's Talk Radical Radio, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day. This on-the-air community forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join today's conversation by calling 415-663-8492 or tweet us at Let's Talk on KWMR. And your hosts today are Robin Carpenter leading our conversation, Mary Frank answering the phones, and I'm Paul Raffel. And when you call in and hear the phone ringing, please hang on. When you hear me say you're on the air, please give us your last, your first name. Oh, your last name. And your last if you'd like to. <laughs> uh, turn down your radio and please watch your language. Oh, we're sharing the script today because <laughs> because we believe in socialism here. So <laughs> today we're going to be talking about how the garment industry is the second dirtiest industry in the world next to big oil. The devastating impacts it has on our planet. Are you aware of it? What are you doing in terms of do you buy into the fast fashion movement of, of changing clothes out a great deal? And are you aware of... The fact that this has so much impact and that we could actually have regional local fiber sheds. So we want to talk about the subject as a whole because we think a lot of people aren't that aware of it. We'd love for you to join our conversation by calling us on 415-663-8492. You know, the world consumes 80 billion pieces of new clothing each year and globally one point. Two trillion dollars a year coming out of that, the fashion industry itself. And just for definition, the term fast fashion is something that has come into use recently, and it really is a contemporary term that's used by fashion retailers to express designs which move from the catwalk quickly to capture current fashion trends. And fast fashion clothing collections are based on the most recent fashion trends presented at Fashion Week. And people who are buying into fast fashion. They actually usually only wear a piece on average five times, and they keep it on average 35 days, and these pieces are exceedingly cheap. Hmm. And that that's a sort of a subset, but a growing, probably one of the most damaging subsets of the garment industry overall. I mean, it's one thing if you have, like, I have my old barber raincoat, which can last, we've got one in our family that's over 100 years old. Hmm. They can last for hundreds of years, as pieces did before. I've mm. got underwear that's probably a hundred years old. But, you know. <laughs> but so, what is it that's uh, that's that's um, actually causing the damage? What is it? The so processing? It's base. It, it's everything from the growing to the processing. Uh, cotton is the number one use of pesticides in the world. The, the number one major usage of pesticides wow. in the world is growing cotton. More than corn, more than anything else, it's cotton is what produces so many pesticides. Uh, secondarily, th- then there is the processing, so the power used for the processing, how it's processed, um, then the way they set the materials and the fabrics, uh, the dyes they use, mm-hmm. then formaldehyde to fix the dyes. So there are all sorts of chemicals that are used in the actual production. And another way that it's very ecologically devastating, if you think in terms of of labor, and that because, um, as Mary was saying, in 1965, I think it was 95% of our clothing in America was made here, and now it's 5%. Mm -hmm, And what happened was when the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, and we started getting EPA environmental regulations in America, the clothing manufacturers headed to countries that did not have those kind of restrictions. Mm -hmm. And additionally, when that happened, they were realize what cheap labor they had, including child labor and basically slave labor. So they were able to generate more and more pieces cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, and here's some information from uh, Rebecca Burgess of Fibershed, our local expert on all of this. Uh, She said that 2,000 synthetic chemicals on the marketplace are used to soften and process clothing. 2,000 chemicals. After farming and dyeing processes are complete, the synthetic compounds used are attributed to a range of human disease, including chronic illness, autoimmune dysfunction, and cancer. Even the most eco-friendly synthetic dyes contain endocrine disruptors, Mm 
Mm-hmm. And the most com- uh, commonly used dyes still contain heavy metals. So, like cobalt, cobalt, how do you pronounce it? Mm-hmm. Chrome, copper, and nickel uh, in neurotoxic concentrations. And like Robin said, the, l- the labor is cheap for cost first and foremost, not the quality, leading to massive exploitation of uh, and many unstable jobs. Speaking of massive exploitation. I was just about to say, we want to talk about the pledge drive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Exploitation of the airwaves by... Let's talk. We want you to help us stay on the air because you know what? It's places like KWMR where you get the real news, not the news where you, you know, you bleed, you lead, or you trump, you dump on us, whatever. Right. But... So this is our annual pledge drive, and we'd love for you to call in and make a pledge. Having community radio is such a treasure, and it really is a bastion of uh, free voices to be able to express our opinions, to be able to talk, and we really need your pledges. And it's really about you. This show is certainly about our listeners and uh, people who call in, and that's the whole idea of the thing is that we want to hear from the community that we are broadcasting in. and uh, Yeah, and it's also it's a, a place to hear music thing. you yeah. can't yeah. hear any place else. And listening to your friends and neighbors on the radio makes you happy. And our uh, youth DJ project gets kids on the radios. And mm-hmm. uh, my neighbor's kid did that, and it was so thrilling for her. And she blossomed as a result of that. Yeah. Oh, I want to tell people the Pledge Drive phone number because it's different than our call-in number. It's 415-663-9050. That's 663-9050 to call in and make a pledge. And we also have really cool pledge premiums. Paul, take it away. Pledge premium. KWMR, steel pint glasses for a pledge of 30 bucks. We have uh, a handful of these steel pint glasses, and they're pretty good. They're they're stainless. They're in, they're sort of engraved or whatever you call it. And if you're in a barroom brawl, Etched. nothing breaks. Exactly. You can throw <laughs> them, pick them up, drink out of them. Uh, Eaton, hang crank radio, the hand turbine emergency radio, which is great. That's for a pledge of a hundred dollars. Uh, bandanas, white with green or yellow with red, with KWMR emblazoned all over it in a map of uh, of the West Marin, uh, for thirty dollars. And this thing, which is sitting right here next to us, which is great, the Mobile Aid Basic Emergency Response Kit for a hundred and fifty dollar pledge, or if you start a new Calendar Club membership at fifteen dollars a month, it's so easy. It just comes right out of your bank account <laughs> or your credit card. You don't even Go notice on. it. And, uh, so Unless you're a Wells Fargo a customer. Calendar <laughs> 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 Club membership, you get this wonderful pack of stuff. It's got everything you need in case of emergency, flashlights, batteries, light sticks, poncho, thermal blanket, whistle with lanyard, mask, safety vest, all, all kinds of wonderful things. And it's Mask? all packaged. Yes, as a uh, an N95 mask. Okay. Oh, I guess if we get gas, yeah, or from industrial pollutants if from clothing. Uh, an explosion in the twin towers over uh, the Grandy Building. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, and what's more, we have a wonderful challenge grant from Teresa Ferrari. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Of two hundred dollars. So if we get two hundred dollars in donations during this next hour. It will be doubled by this challenge grant from Teresa. So please call in 415-663-9050 and uh, someone will be on the phone to take your call. And remember, it's tax deductible. It's a tax deductible donation. And also, this is an incredible place to get emergency information about Mm. our community. We really can't get it anyplace else. Winter is coming. That's exactly right. And we, you know, one of the things that's really interesting, I talked about this before, when um, we had the deregulation of the radio and media industry, the Telecommunications Act of 96, I believe it was, um, we lost so many locally owned and local regionally owned radio stations and stations just started simulcast. And so we really lost sort of that beauty of radio being connected to community, except when it comes to community radio. Mm. And it's such a valuable, valuable tool to have. And for those of you who've lived here a long time, you certainly know that when we've had power outages or roads closed or earthquakes, we've been right here reporting it all. We all know how to get to, hopefully we all remember how to open the generator and 
make it happen. And it's something that we're doing all together. And it's, you know, having been in the radio business for many, many years, it's I feel like we're like this bastion of real the real heart of what radio is, it's which is community. It's a rare jewel, really. Yeah. It is. It's uh, very hard to find. There's a few little bubbles up and down the coast here where they have real local community stations. And they're getting harder to find because, you know, anything that works – Somebody wants to take it over. And yeah. Make, and make money off of it. Yeah. So please pick up the phone right now and dial 415-663-9050 to make a donation to help keep us on the air. Uh, and we'd appreciate your willingness to support us. Ah. Uh, we see Mia coming in here. Mia. So Mia, a- let's see. Oh, so let's see. Who are we thanking for donations? All of you. Uh, Anonymous. Oh, the organization Anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> they like it because we're letting all the, the word out, what's going on. We're not hiding anything. Let's talk. So thank you, Anonymous, for, oh, $100. And also then that means we're going to be matched for $100 by Teresa Ferrari. So oh, that's $200. Oh, well, well, the $100 oh, donation, so it matched the donation. Oh, so I if see. we can get a hundred more dollars, we'll get a hundred more dollars from Teresa. Okay. So please be sure to call in at four one five six six three nine zero five zero. And now, if we're not confusing you too much, we also want you to call in and talk to us <laughs> about what you think about the whole thing After of fashion you've pledged, and clothing. Of course, yes, pledge. It, well, we we don't do pay for play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that means. Oh, I see. So we've already made a hundred dollars. So that means that. We Teresa's grant has already given us double that 100. So okay, we can see who oh, did math. This is, this is fabulous. <laughs> so we have 400 to go, so, so call get on in. the phone. But if you'd like to talk to us about what's going on in the world of the garment industry, we'd love for you to call. This is Let's Talk Radio with host Robin Carpenter, Mary Frank, and I'm Paul Raphael. Oh, <laughs> Wait, you can tell I again. borrowed Paul's script. Please call it's us the on... the chemicals in the water. <laughs> uh, it's my Duluth trading underwear. Please call us on 415-663-8492 and tell us what you think about. Are you aware of this? Were you aware of this? How do you do your clothing? Do you thrift store? Do you buy new? Do you have vintage? You can also tweet us at Let's Talk on KWMR with your thoughts and opinion. And now it tells me Robin continued the conversation. Uh, so now <laughs> I'm wearing a hemp shirt. Uh, yes. Is that any cleaner than any other fabric? Do they Are they still spraying hemp, you think? Well, the thing is, is even if you buy hemp or me organic thinking I was cotton. getting all this great organic cotton underwear, that actually they'll say like organic cotton or hemp, but you have to find out was it, what was it treated with? Because a lot of people are using that we're using organic cotton or we're using hemp or we're using bamboo, but then they're using the dyes and the things that mm-hmm. set the fabric. So it may in origin be organic, but then is it really? And what I found in my mm-hmm. research, very, very few things actually aren't treated um, until you start to really look at some smaller companies like what Rebecca Burgess is starting with the Fiber Shed Project or has been working on for six years now. And then you have uh, Paul Wallace and Natalie Patricia, uh, formerly of the Heirloom Seed Company and Seed Bank in Petaluma, who are doing, um, they've just started just with T-shirts and bags because it's so hard to get the whole process set up where you're in control from start to finish. So they partner, that's why they call it Harvest Harvest and Mill. They go, they have the farmer, they found a mill on the East Coast. They, oh, they have to have a, like a gin, like the the, the the processes the cotton to actually get it to, to the mill and then the sewers. So setting up your your chain. So if you really – so you have to sort of look more for these local people, but it is really difficult. I, I've had – To find the infrastructure to do it. Well, she's and, building the infrastructure. That's yeah. what's so amazing about her work. Fantastic. She is creating this infrastructure. So you do have – or or Fibershed. Do you have that, Mary? I think it's Fibershed.com. I'm not sure. Well, if you if you Google Rebecca Burgess Fibershed, yeah. you'll get all of her yeah, various. Yeah, I'll look it up. Because so, she's very uh, – well, I, I just want to say one thing to Paul about your hemp shirt. At least it doesn't have microscopic plastic debris from <laughs> washing clothing made of synthetic fibers, which is accumulating in the environment. So you have that in its favor. Okay, so Rebecca's website is Fibershed, F-I-B-E-R-S-H-E-D, dot com. Hmm. And, you know, we've had Rebecca a lot on the station as she did her journey herself, trying to see what it was like 
to procure and wear clothing from within a 100-mile radius, and she covered it over a one-year uh, project on a blog oh. and talked about how as fall was coming around, she was calling the person that was supposed to be knitting her socks because it was getting cool earlier, and how she was talking about your becoming aware of your relationship to your clothing instead of this sort of like you know vomiting out of like closets busting with clothing that that's only really a recent phenomena uh of the of the past 40 50 years Mm. and that you know having really beautiful pieces and i remember when i was growing up i was always taught it's far better to have just a few pieces that are high quality that will last a lifetime than have a lot of stuff in your closet because i remember you know my grandmother made a lot of our clothes growing up and people were still when i was growing up my friends most of us had somebody in our family making our clothes we did not go get store-bought clothes except for special occasions now and then and most of my clothing until i was a teenager was made by my grandmother Mm. Uh, and that's what people did there's a couple of statistics. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Chinese textile industry also creates about 3 billion tons of soot each year, let alone what's pumping into the rivers. Millions of tons of unused fabric at Chinese mills go to waste each year when dyed the wrong color. Oh, my goodness. A single mill in China can use 200 tons of water for each ton of fabric it dyes. Many rivers run with the colors of the season as the untreated toxic dyes wash off from mills. We've all seen that, right? I mean, we've all seen on TV anyway. The, the brightly colored rivers. rivers. Like the, on the East Coast here. And you know, and Rebecca talks about another um, uh, adjunct to that. Mm. When we've offshored the effects of our consumption, which has led to a great disconnect of the actual environmental and social costs of our clothing. You know, it's over there. The fiber shed prototype wardrobe was a small but crucial step towards defining a new textile paradigm. And she's now making clothes with no carbon imprint. And this has been a, you know, people say, oh, it's not, it's not scalable. Yes, it is. You go from community to community. She did it across <clears throat> the country and now she's international. It's quite something really? so and the thing about the scalability is How? well well she hasn't actually gotten she's in the process of getting the mills you first you've got to find a mill and so you can't really do a fiber shed in like a small local area like we consider our food shed so no, it has to be regional so mm-hmm. it's got to be regional and in california we used to have we used to grow a lot more cotton mm-hmm. and we used to have a mill in northern california so looking at the designs for having a mill for a region and getting investors to to put into that one of the issues when i had interviewed rebecca is you know we're not talking about a high margin of profit we're talking about a decent profit we're mm-hmm. talking about communities being willing to buy in and buy the clothing so that it can sustain and you know uh, one of the big things that they've been doing is wool had stopped being used when the the it really hurt the the sheep industry when uh, people who were raising sheep for either milk or meat lost the ability to sell the wool mm-hmm. because when polyester came out, all the uniforms for the United States military and most police departments were made from wool, American wool. And when the polyester came out, we stopped using wool. Sure. And even people like REI and Patagonia and all the people started using these uh, high-tech micro fibers fibers. And microfibers. They totally crashed the ability to have the wool market, and that's part of what's coming back, too, in communities yeah. around the country. So I, I have to say I'm skeptical of the no carbon footprint, because what, Let what me find human activity has well, no carbon footprint? No measurable. Let me see if I can uh, find that. Anyway, I while, will, I will while find Mary's it. looking for the evidence... <laughs> <laughs> Please call in with a with a pledge. Pledge to call into four one five six six three nine zero five zero and support this wonderful station. Uh, support this show. It always looks good when money comes in during one's own share. Share. Yes, it it means- would be lovely if our if our listeners would call in right now and make a pledge at four one five six six three nine zero five zero. There's all kinds of things you can you can. Come in and claim after the drive is over, you know, the emergency radio, the pint glasses, the bandana, the emergency kit. And, uh, hey. And uh, an and idea. we had an idea. What about yeah, if you it. make a pledge, if you'd like to come on and co-host with bucks. us? Yeah, if you make a $100 pledge, you can contact, so Amanda doesn't kill us, you can contact 
Paul or me or Mary, and we'll arrange for you to come in and co-host and, and maybe pick a topic of your choice. There you are. Yeah. A, there's a deal, right? So let's hope that nobody kills us for just throwing that out there. But <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. I found, uh, Yes. Please call, yes. but I found the... Four one five six six three nine zero five zero. Let's repeat that again. I don't want to rush it. Go That's ahead and repeat the number. Four one five six six three nine zero five zero to pledge to support KWMR and Let's Talk Community Radio. Okay, this is how she has um, positioned this. Hmm. Critics are quick to assume that Fiber Shed Project is and will remain a fledgling concept that cannot scale to affordably clothe human communities. What is missing from these arguments is a working knowledge of community organizing, prototype development, replication, and ecological systems. Fiber sheds are community-driven projects inherent in the creation is a slow, democratic, collaborative process. However, right. even in this slow emerging culture, those of us developing the new fiber and dye systems are currently able to produce zero waste garments and uh. produce zero toxic freshwater effluent and have shrunk the carbon, oh, I'm sorry, shrunk the carbon in fr- in, uh, footprint by six times than that of conventional garments. Excellent. These prototypes were developed without the crucial equipment, like solar-powered mills, which is their next step, and are ne- that are necessary to provide clothing at affordable prices. Yeah. So that's so better said. They're doing it very cleanly. Very cleanly nice. and very creatively. And, and Until one of the, we got so clever and started I mean, the whole th- th- part of it is, you know, and uh, Paul Wallace and I talked, Paul at Harvest and Mill, about um, w- this is like the next big thing for all of all of us, which are millions of people across the country who want regenerative and sustainable agriculture and clean food and pure food, that there are so many of us. And if we wake up to this, this is our next step in making sure that our waters and our lands are clean and that also f- wanting clean food for our bodies – Putting these, this clothing against our bodies, you know, the skin mm. is the largest organ of the body. And so don't think and that all absorbs. these – And it absorbs. Yeah. And especially in areas like your armpits or your mm. private bits. Especially you for know. kids, too. And so that this is really an issue um, for our health, that all of this is against our bodies. And we sleep on sheets that have these dyes and chemicals. We're breathing in the off-gassing mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so – this is really, a, you know, the next step when we're thinking about agriculture and and health and our planet. So what do we do? We're just not buying as much clothing. That's just the first step. Just buy good quality clothing and make it last. That's that's buy less. Don't first. just go to wherever you know the big companies and and get a bundle of t-shirts. Go and get one good t or two good t-shirts and make them last. Well, and you can Harvest and Mill has this great um, story. They use the story of the iconic. American t-shirt to kind of tell the story of Mm. what happened in the garment industry to clothing and the shift. So in telling the story of the t-shirt, you can go to their website, which is Harvest and A-N-D, harvestandmill.com. And it's fascinating that they have all these great pictures of Marlon Brando and James Dean and how the t-shirt, you know, moved away from underwear and Mm. how this iconic thing that was cotton. And also they talk about Levi's, the classic Levi's and how they were made and how you know, bring, trying to bring those things back. Mm-hmm. And also the fact that well-made garments will last for years. I mean, I collect vintage tuxedo shirts. I have one tuxedo shirt that's 120 years old. Yikes. And, you know, that... So the first thing is to change our behaviors and our patterns and to shift the consciousness, which is happening even in the fast fashion, quote unquote, world. H&M, which is a big clothing manufacturer, especially for young women, they started a conscious clothing line where Mm. they're asking their customers to bring clothing they don't want to wear anymore, recycle clothing, and then they're having designers cut it up and remake them into other things. Now, that's a little bit of greenwashing because that's really not addressing the deeper problem. I was... I was at a, a port, a European port, many years ago, back in the 60s. Oh, boy. Um, and there were bundles of uh, ripped-up fabrics, which mm-hmm. are, some of which I took and made into a necklace because, you know. It was, <laughs> it was the 60s. Days. And uh, But, yeah, there was all this cotton waste. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking that they were recycling that somehow. They were making paper out of it, maybe? Good quality paper out of cotton fibers? Now or? what they do is there's such a proliferation that the 85% of it goes to landfills or is incinerated. Wow. And only 
0.01% is actually recycled into something else. Yikes. The other thing is when you have organic cotton, if you've used all these chemicals on it, you can't compost it. But you, if, if you buy, say you buy a T-shirt from Harvest and Mill or a fiber shed to connect you to somebody, yeah. and it's cotton with natural dyes or wool with natural dyes, you can compost it in your garden. Mm-hmm. You can do, throw it right into the compost. And what's happening now is we have barges and barges of this stuff just being sent to, and a lot of it goes out to landfills other places. Yeah. So it's it's really a, a bigger crisis than any of us have thought about. I certainly did not know anything. Well, did I know that it was a polluting industry? Maybe, but not as much. You didn't and, I mean, second, second largest, largest polluter second, yeah. oil and uh, and as, the water. I mean, water. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah. So there was a there's a nice statistic here. If I, uh, Five organizations, after they found out about some of the environmental degradation, they sent letters to the CEOs of 48 companies and respondents like Nike, Eskel, Walmart, H&M, Levi's, Adidas, and Burberry all started to take proactive measures to uh, and have carried out inquiries and pushed suppliers to take corrective actions. And that's just about the environmental damage, let alone the sort of slave labor damage that's involved in, uh, you know, that fire, the fire oh, in Bangladesh. Oh, the horrible fires. Where they were all locked in. Yeah. I mean, it, it's basically, as so many other things, it survives in this cheap cost. Is It's slave labor. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Let's see. Oh, Mia just came in. Excellent. And David Clarkson of Point Ray just you, made a donation. And we we're need to match that. So right now we've raised so far $240, and we need to raise 260 more. And we need $60 to completely Wait. meet the challenge grant from Teresa. Oh, that's right, because we have the extra, yeah. another 100 from Teresa. That's right. Yes, come on, you can do it. Yes, it's please. It's 415-663-9050. Make our telephone volunteer so, work. So, Paul, what was it you just were saying? That number, I, I was. Uh, there's a well. What, there's a list of five, actually six, seven. Uh, Nike, Eskel, Walmart, H and M, Levi's, Adidas, and Burberry all started mm-hmm. to take measures to uh, to push their suppliers into. But, being a little more conscious, but you know, but that's how like much the that media attention, and that's the thing too that I know Rebecca has talked about, and Paul and Natalie have talked about to me that are in the business of it that they um, that we have to be aware of the greenwashing, and the fashion industry spends for every garment that is produced in the fashion industry, eighty percent of the cost of the garment is marketing and advertising. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. what they do. It's marketing and advertising. It's 80% of the cost. And at the end of big sales, like the summer sale or whatever at Macy's, it's cheaper for them. They dump the stuff they didn't sell in the dumpster. Wow. They just dump it in the dumpster. And you're not allowed to go to the dumpster and take talk, it. Out. Talk yeah. about a throwaway culture. Yeah. Okay, this is KWMR. We want to remind you of that. Uh, we're a community radio station for West Marin, 90.5 in Point Ray Station, 89.9 in Bellinas, 92.3 in the San Geronimo Valley, and streaming live on KWMR. I'd like to repeat our pledge drive number again, which is 415 663 9050 to keep this truly fantastic radio station on the air, the only one like it in the entire uh, Bay Area. And uh, so call us, call us to make a pledge, 663-9050. And I'd like to thank our underwriters, West Marin Community Services, uh, which provides programs to support the community, including a food pantry, an event rental library, emergency financial assistance, the Water Dog Swimming Program, a community Thanksgiving gathering, holiday food and gifts, tax prep day, Latino engagement programs, and more. Information at 415-663-8361 or online at westmerncommunityservices.org. And we'd also like to thank uh, Toby's Feed Barn. Toby's Feed Barn on Main Street and Point Ray Station, offering hay and feed, garden supplies, gifts, fresh bread and produce, and fine art in Toby's Gallery. Toby's is home to the Community Garden, Toby's Coffee Bar, Yoga Toast Studio, and the Saturday Farmer's Market during the summer. And, and this is KWMR Community... Oh, that's you again. 
<laughs> no, you're a little bit further to, down. You're listening to Let's Talk Radio. <laughs> call in radio. Oh, boy. We're so excited about Let's Pleasure Talk, Drive. Call in radio with co hosts Robin Carpenter, Mary Frank, and I'm Paul Raffel. You can tell I'm Paul Raffel. <laughs> your voice is lower. I tried um, to be you earlier. Please share your views by calling 415 663 8492 or tweet us at Let's Talk on KWMR. And please call in with a, with a donation, with a pledge. We just need $60 to meet the last of the challenge from Teresa Ferrari, which will double that 60 into 120 Thank you. You can do it. Come on now. And that number is 415-663-9050. And we're talking today about the dirty side of fashion, and we're asking your opinions on what we've talked about uh, and how you feel about the throwaway wardrobes and the crappy clothing <laughs> that is literally polluting the environment far more than most people realize. Well, I was struck by the astounding turnover of people's clothes and, that you, you quoted and that's at interesting the beginning of the show. Because I think that for most of us in West Marin, we are probably not the kinds of folks that are out buying, oh, now my fall wardrobe. Oh, now my spring wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Oh, how was fashion week for you? Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, we have like one of the world's greatest thrift stores here in Point Reyes, as well as a really great consignment store. Mm-hmm. So and one of the things I do notice with the younger people in the world that I'm in and our world in West Marin, um, we have young people like Rebecca and others, and that they are, they do recycle, they do reuse, and a lot of them are sewing and making their own clothing. And I think that, so in the world mm-hmm. I'm in, the young people I know do sew and do make their own clothing. And there's actually a friend of mine out here who sews, Peggy Day, which is great because uh-huh. I can go to her and say, you know, can you help me change this or fix that? So I, I think that in my own immediate world, it's much more. Um, you know, conscious about yeah. that consumption, and as well, living in the area we live in, none of us have, very few of us have walk-in closets. So, in order to be able to have that kind of stuff, is also takes up an awful I lot. I have of a room. walk-in house. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> a walk-in house. Oh, we want to thank Marcel Rodan. Thank you, Marcel. Oh, Marcel. you've called us before, right? Okay, yeah, and Marcel yeah, made a donation. You. So now we just need fifty more dollars to meet the last challenge grant or yes. for this challenge grant, and we still need. Uh, 250 to meet our big goal of $600 for this show. So. Don't don't let us get spanked for not meeting our goal. Yes, yeah, so please call us. <laughs> call us at 415-663-9050 to make your pledge. That's 415-663-9050. And you could also do it online, of course, kwmr.org. You can go up to the top bar on the front page to the donate button and do it there if you like. But it's much more exciting when you do it. Here. And you call in, and we can say your name on and the air. by the way, and another oh, calendar way, club I'm is really, wearing a oops. calendar club button. Which is one of the most important uh, donations that we can receive as a station because Calendar Club enables us to budget our money throughout the year, knowing those funds are coming in every month. It Not only does it help us know our income flow and help us budget, it also helps us when you're writing a grant. When you go, we've got these people that give every month regularly. So please consider if you haven't already been a calendar club member joining calendar club and if you do you get this special super duper mobile aid thing with all this goody mobile stuff aid. in it Basic um emergency if you make kit. a calendar pledge for 150 dollars yeah uh, and 15, is it, oh, 15, 150 dollar pledge or 15 dollars a month which is i think now the minimum for the calendar club uh it's 30 dollars a month isn't it incredible 15 15 dollars a month um Oh. So it is the minimum. Uh-oh. So no, no, it's thirty dollars a month. I believe. No, 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 no. It's okay. We have the boss here. <laughs> Ten dollars a month oh. is the minimum for okay. the calendar club, but for that premium, fifteen for that special emergency kit. It's fifteen. It's a new fifteen dollar a month oh. calendar club member. Aha. Uh-huh. So if you've never been in Calendar Club, sign up for $15 a month, and you get super-duper mobile I aid. Mean, you can survive anything on Earth kit. That's it. <laughs> this is a <laughs> priceless you. survival kit Thank right you. here. Wonderful. So, so please call us at 663-9050 to make a pledge. And also, we'd love to hear from you your thoughts. If you're surprised, if you even thought about this, what your sort of patterns are around clothing at 415-663-8492. Yeah, I was surprised, too, at that number, Paul, because I think that 
Um, but I, I can really see that with teens and and younger people in their twenties, and out kind of outside of the our bubble where we live and where I think we are a little more conscious about conspicuous consumption. Yeah. But I mean, you think about kids, what do they do in, in suburban areas? They go to the mall every week and they go shopping, shopping. And I can remember a couple of years ago when I had to go to a golf tournament, I go, who do I wear to a golf tournament? And, and so I went by Macy's to see what I could find. I walked out of Macy's with a linen jacket, <laughs> uh, white Levi's, two blouses, and a pair of shoes for under a hundred dollars because it was their summer sale, and the tournament I was going to was in late summer, so they're clearing out all the summer stuff to bring in the fall stuff. And I had this sick to my stomach feel. I mean, I got what I needed to go to the event, mm-hmm. but I felt like something is so wrong. You cannot have this many articles of clothing. The jacket itself, with all the pockets and the stitching, I was like, "There's no way." I mean, somebody made a dollar a week. It, to make this, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh dear! Uh, Twenty million dollars is goes to New York City economy during Fashion Week. Yes, well, well that's okay. I don't know. Well, it's, one of the things is, you know, it's a two hundred and fifty billion dollar industry for the United States every year. Um, but the other thing about this, as well as the pollution factor, is. In the creation of certain fabrics like polyester, that's mm. all fossil fuels. Mm-hmm. And, and it takes hundreds of years for a polyester garment to break down. And the thing with rayon, when we go, oh, rayon, well, it's made from trees. Well, they're not sustainably cutting the, those trees. I mean, why are we cutting down our trees when we have wool left over from sheep and we can grow cotton sustainably? Mm. And one of the – Sally Fox, who's growing cotton up in um, Cape Valley, who Rebecca Burgess works with, she's actually growing strains of cotton that are naturally different colors. So that you actually have – so there are really? cottons that are a, a greenish color, a bluish color. So they're – cotton strains that are already yes. colored. And then yeah. she takes the flowers or the leaves or whatever to make the natural dyes. And and here's an interesting statistic as well, is that the average American throws away 64 pounds of fabric a year. It's actually 85 pounds now. Really? Yeah. My goodness. Did it's you 80, say that? I it's 85 say. pounds of clothing waste per year per American. Mm. 85 wow. pounds of clothing. Per year, I can't. I can't remember the last time I threw something. <laughs> I mean, I I will say I have taken eighty five pounds of clothing to the thrift store, praying that you know. Uh, but you know, I did learn early on. You know, buy, you know, buy less, but buy quality, yeah, so yeah. that you. I I mean, when my aunt passed away, I inherited her. It's a beautiful trench coat that she had bought in her twenties. It's still gorgeous. Mm. I have an Irish fisherman's sweater that was my grandfather's. I have you know these kinds of pieces will last forever and, you know, learning how to care for them. Um, Because one, back to the whole thing about microbeads and washing and drying. So in the washing and drying of these clothes, it's going straight into our water supply. Mm -hmm. These Mm -hmm. And also, I know when I worked at Travelsmith for a while, uh, they... Uh, were, were among a lot of other companies using nanotechnology, nanoparticles in the fabrics to keep the fabrics from wrinkling and or to make fabrics antibiotic, uh, uh, um, antibacterial. Anti- antibacterial. Oh, so, you know, and there's so little regulation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in in this world. And like I said, they, the, what they've done, as Mary was saying, since 1965, we've gone from 95% mm-hmm. to 5%. They just leave America so they don't have to put up with So they it. don't have to conform to regulation. Mm-hmm. And of course, TPP will oh, pay that, to all that. Yeah. They'll all come back to America with TPP because they won't have to worry about environmental regulations. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> call one of in, the- won't you? Call in uh, to voice your opinions, uh, 415-663-8492, or even better this week. Call 415-663-9050 to pledge just a little donation, anything you can afford. We have wonderful premiums for some of the larger donations, but hey, like Marcel gave 10 bucks. Thank you, Marcel. We were, Yay. It's wonderful. It Every wonderful. little bit counts. If you everybody know, did that, we'd be flush. And <laughs> exactly. it's important to remember that, you know, as we go into winter, I remember last year I was coming to the station before I was even on air just for, like, what's happening with the roads. You can't get this information anyplace right. else. So in order to keep that rolling, we need your help. Call us at 415-663-9050. 
And uh, let me remind you, I mean, we've just said all that, but I haven't said this. This is KWMR's <laughs> weekly Let's Talk call-in show with co-host Robin Carpenter, Mary Frank, and I am Paul Raffel. So call us, 415-663-8492. Oh, like we and and sure we, enough, we have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? MK, from Seattle. Hi. Hi. Mary, what was it again? MK? Yes. MK. Hi. Hi there. You're calling from Seattle. I am calling from Seattle, where it's very gray and chilly. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kind of gray here, too. <laughs> so what are you, what's on your mind about this? Well, I've been listening to your show, and um, I'm a thrift shopper and a natural fiber wearer from way back. I even have linen sheets on my bed because they feel good and age well. And mm-hmm. If I have to sleep alone, I might as well sleep in something comfortable. <laughs> 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 ha, ha, ha. And... Uh, and I'm just wondering about, um, I can't remember, I'm having a senior moment. Um, does it, is it, this, is it the, the, the stuff that's going into the water that's the main problem? Are we absorbing stuff through our skin from wearing polyester stuff? Both, I actually. I, I don't um, wear polyester stuff because it makes me sweat. And um, so I don't, I don't wear it, but I'm wondering if... You know, it's a variety of places, MK. It's, it's toxic for us to have fabric with these chemicals next to our bodies. Um, it's toxic for us to sleep in those fabrics, you know, next to us. And then secondarily, or, you know, hand in hand with that, the pollutants that are produced in making these fabrics into with these the over 2,000 different chemicals that can be yeah. used going into the water and um, as yeah. well as into the air. And um, and the fact that these factories overseas have ver- little to no regulation for environmental impact. So it's kind of a twofold. It's, it's messing up the planet and it's hurting our bodies. Right. Um, I have several friends who are mainly on the East Coast and northern New England who have tried to set up little clothing sh- shops where they produce linen clothing. And um, they can't really make it They can't because they have to charge so much for the, for, the, for the product that they produce. It's not cost-effective for people to buy them. I mean, you have to spend 200 bucks on an apron, which is perfectly gorgeous and will last forever, even if you use it every day. But it, it's um, not that many people are going to spend that much money on an apron mm. or a shirt or whatever. And do well, you... I'm a thrift shopper because I, you know, I can run my hand down the rack and know what's silk and what's cashmere and what's linen and sort of discard the rest of it. I've been doing it for so long. So, MK, do you feel like if people were educated and that they were, if you knew, like, look, I only need twenty pieces of clothing in my closet, you know, That's and right. I only so that then you might buy that linen shift or linen apron, and maybe you pay two hundred dollars, but you know you'll pass that on to your kid. Mm-hmm. You, know, you never have to buy another apron. Do, what do you think, MK? But I think that if you go to any mall in America on a Saturday afternoon and see all the crap that they're selling, I mean this this throwaway stuff, or, and it's just not well made and doesn't fit well, and they just want to buy it because there's so much peer pressure to look like the other guy. And so I've got grandchildren that are approaching that age, <clears throat> and I sort of see that beginning to happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to stick my nose in because grandmothers can't really do that. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So have you tried taking, I don't know what ages they are, but, you know, I thought, have you tried maybe taking them thrift shopping to see it's sort of oh, like do. a look, game? Yeah, they love thrift shopping, but once you get in the thrift store, this this um, sort of blank gleam comes into the eye. And, <laughs> and they're running around pulling like a great huge pile of clothes by the dressing room door. <laughs> and then you walk out of there, and there you are. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, I, well, if I give her hand, my 10-year-old granddaughter hand-me-downs, I just gave her a pair of silk lounging pajamas that I've had for 100 years that are really great and feel wonderful and also can be washed in the washing machine. Um, and, she, you know, she loves that. She loves the like, cashmere sweaters and and things like that, but she's 10. But you're, yeah. you're planting the seeds, though, don't you think, a little yeah, I'm, bit? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Excellent. You know one of my children quite well. Oh. Amanda Heistet. Ah. And um, she was a most wonderful thrift, thrift store shopper 
as a child, the, the prom dresses and how she fixed them all up and everything was just fabulous. And I think that with the exception of all the polyester and synthetic biking stuff that those guys use, mm-hmm. her closet's pretty much full of real, real stuff. You know, and I know you well, companies like Patagonia are, are looking. They're very aware of like having gone into the whole high tech fabric for sports and. They give I back can, to the community too. That, that they're really trying to minimize that impact um, with a lot of what they're doing. With like you say, giving back to the community and right. trying to be more aware of their policies in their uh, places where stuff is being manufactured. Right. Well, well it's an uphill struggle for sure. Well, it is, but as you know, as more and more people become aware, and there's more and more people like Rebecca building these cottage communities, the prices will come down, and people will realize that even if they have to pay a little more, it's well worth it. So we're hoping for well, that. So yeah, me too. So. Because because they look so much better too. Oh, they're they fantastic, and they feel better when you wear them. They You're do wearing feel better. Yeah, they do feel better. There's nothing like. A silk shirt under a cashmere sweater. <laughs> the blues. Oh, you know, boy. MK, it's really funny. I went on a many years ago on this trek in Peru with some other people, and I couldn't afford to buy it. They bought all this high tech gear and stuff. So we we're going up at like this 10,000 foot pass. And uh, so all I had was my original stuff my dad had given me when I was like in my early teens. So it was basically silk. And wool, silk undergarments, silk long johns, and wool. Oh, the best. And when wool gets wet, wool will heat up with your body and act as a, it does not chill you out. Well, we right. got hit with an unseasonable sleet storm, and we were on horseback going over a high pass, and there was no shelter. And by the end of the day, everyone had hypothermia but me. <laughs> I believe And they were in the million-dollar outfits, and I was Excellent. wearing literally my wool socks that had been given to my grandmother had been darned several times. Excellent. And I was the un- – so we unpacked my – we finally got to shelter, and we unpacked the rest of my – we had to get everybody naked and dried off mm-hmm. and dress them in what I had in my pack. Because that you know, so I've always been a big proponent of your safest in silk and wool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love it. Thanks, I MK. Hand knitted socks on as we speak. Ah, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> MK by a friend. I mean, freezy, freezy, freezy. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, thank you for thanks. calling. Thank, thank you. Because this is a very interesting subject. Thank thanks. you so much. Okay. Bye. 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 So, yeah, do call in. We've, uh, we've got about 10 minutes more or less to go for you to make a donation, a pledge during this show. So please call in 415-663-9050 or do it online if you prefer. But we have a wonderful telephone volunteer out there waiting for your call. Okay. And we still need a $50 pledge to meet the uh, challenge from Teresa Ferrari, which would double that $50 to 100 So please call in. And I'd like to remind everybody that KWMR has been a community resource since day one. The station brings folks together and helps <laughs> spread the word. What? That's good. Oh, that's good. Uh, KWMR <laughs> connects the community. It's a voice for all nonprofits. This is a wonderful service that they do, that we do. Uh, we interview interesting people and announce big things that are important to the local community. Maybe even you have been on KWMR. Your donation now to the pledge drive will help KWMR continue to reach out and to engage with our listeners right here in West Marin. So please call us. 415-663-9050 and I think we have well, some new donors. Well, we just met our challenge grant. Thank you to Nancy Hoffman of Inverness. So we now only need to get to our goal $30. $30. So come on, somebody out there, one of you wonderful folks, $30 <laughs> and we will meet our goal. She just joined the calendar club. Oh, oh, oh and, and Nancy, thank you. You just joined the calendar club. Yay! Yay. That's so amazingly helpful for the station. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. And you know what, Nancy? Call in any time and tell us what you think about whatever we're talking about. Yeah, we love your support. <laughs> so Excellent. Thank you. you. Know, yes, $30 to go, folks. You can do it. Don't buy that 
pack of 15 (laughs) (laughs) t-shirts. By the Calendar Club. (laughs) You know, one of the things that, you know, when uh, I had talked with Paul and Natalie about the whole, you know, the t-shirt thing, how they cringe when they see some, they walk in somewhere like a gas station and see t-shirts for $5 each. You know, to buy one of their t-shirts, which is like, you know, organic cotton, they know the farmers, they're they're contracted with farmers Mm -hmm. in California and in Texas and all of that. It's, I think it's $30, but, um, oh, it looks like Mm. we have a collar. But it's so worth it when you know what you're doing wearing that. Well, so, and it's hard wearing. It's so Oh, it lasts for years and years. Okay, let's take our collar. Okay. Collar, what's your name, please? Hello, this is Marcel again. Hi, Marcel Marcel. again. (laughs) I I love every, all your topics are great. You you know, I enjoy that way you just called in. Uh, anyway, I thought, I thought about a, a 97-year-old friend of mine. She's going to be 98. She's a well-known author in, uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, and she, she wrote me, we, we corresponded, we've been corresponding for like 30 years. And she, one letter she wrote me, she said, uh, about the, uh, the throwaway economy. Uh, she said, use it up, wear it out, make it do, and do it out. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> and, you know, Marcel, I think what you're pointing out is the, what we need more than anything is a mindset shift, don't you think? Yeah, exactly, mindset. Uh, my my whole house uh, is furnished with furniture I've got from thrift stores. It's all antique, basically. Mm-hmm. Beautiful furniture, and, you know, and a good cores. And then my wardrobe, I have, you know, all uh, wool and silk and uh, beautiful clothes, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I bought it at a very, you know, very low price and good, good cause, uh, and uh, all um, great material and uh, and good for the environment. So anyway, I encourage other people to do the same. Thank you, Marcel. That's a great message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because all the thrift stores are are supporting some other great cause as well. So it's uh, a double good karma. Double dipping. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and Marcel, fun. thank you so much too for your support of us. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Yes, we have $30 to go left to make our $600 goal. Thank you for everyone who's already pledged. Uh, the number for that is 415-663-9050. And we've got about three minutes for you to call in with uh, with your thoughts on this, the fast fashion that's killing the world. And, and I do think, you know, that it's really the next awakening. And because we have... Millions of Americans and people around the world that have awakened around agriculture and how we're treating the land. I think this next step is, you know, fiber shed and the production of our clothing. If we can just wake up those who are already awakened around mm-hmm. agriculture and educate, I think it'll really make a big difference. And, you know, this is something that everybody can do. You don't have to have a special skill. You don't have to anything. You just raise your consciousness and act accordingly. It's not complicated to make a difference and to have your whole family make a difference and your friends so this is doable and actionable right now yep and i know that they were talking about um linens um mk was talking about there's a woman here in marin county that does beautiful linens um and i was just trying to look her up if she's in Mill, mill valley but um so there are places and i am finding that you can get linens that that's more much more easy and things made out of linen like certain shifts and aprons they are expensive but the one thing too it's just like we had to do once again in the food movement that you're not going to get great food for cheap because we're not we're, the, it's being subsidized mm. you know so in, in clothing is being subsidized by basically slave labor and mm. raping and pillaging the environment so if you come to a level of consciousness, you're not going to mind paying two hundred dollars for, say, a cool shift dress that that's in linen that you will wear for, for 20, every, 20, 30 years, and you'll pass on. Don't be a slave to fashion, right? I mean, exactly. That's so fleeting, and that's what the, all these companies are relying on is that you are going to throw away everything. And you know, worn it really, three times. if you think hell? about women in Paris, <laughs> it's just mind-boggling to me. I mean, I just think about spending time in Paris and Italy, and the women being so elegant, and what they really do is it's about they have three or four base pieces, and then mm. they do scarves or they do shawls mm-hmm. or they do you know it's it's, it's about accessories. It's about having beautiful, solid pieces that will last you a lifetime instead of this mindset of, like, I can never let somebody see me in the same outfit twice kind of weird mindset. Yeah, we're being so programmed with the uh, marketing, it's unbelievable. This is another huge area where we have to resist that and teach our children 
uh, what what's really going on and how they are creating need. Paul? Well, I was wondering if you still had your wedding dress. I still have my wedding See, dress. Sally still has her wedding and dress. And it was too. silk. It was I it was yeah. all silk. Mm-hmm. And um now, wedding dress number one and two, I passed on to others. <laughs> but um, since I think Andy's the keeper. Uh, That's good. But so, no, and I hope that one day some young women in my life, you know, it was uh, hand beaded and it's silk. Mm. And I have, you know, had it cleaned and it's preserved. And mm. so. That's the one piece of clothing that women, you know, will, in general will, will hang say. on to, right? Or, or you can do. A friend of mine did years ago a divorce party for everybody. It was like in, our, in their in our 30s, and they was divorced. So everybody wore their most recent wedding wow. dress to the <laughs> their party. most recent <laughs> wedding dress. <laughs> So please remember to call us at 415-663-9050 and make a pledge. We only need $30 more to make our goal. And I want to thank all of our listeners and our callers today for your participation. I hope you'll tune in every Thursday at 11 because your voice really does matter here on KWMR. What's next? Oh, I have Paul's scripter. (laughs) (laughs) KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. Uh, next week, uh, Thursday at 11 a.m., we'll be discussing monopolies. And whatever happened to the Federal Trade Commission? Industrial, are they alive? political, <laughs> all kinds of monopolies. Okay, this has been Let's Talk on KWMR with your hosts Robin Carpenter, Paul Raffel, and I'm Mary Frank.